Hi, this is Aileen Gonzalez with Life According to Me. So I want to share some information about my background and maybe you'll better understand how it all ties into what I do today. So uh, many, many years um, I, I spent in, in the corporate world and when I was in the corporate world, I remember that I started from the bottom and I always had this vision of myself as leading. I wasn't a person who really liked to um, follow instructions. I actually always had ideas and I always was with somebody who was always thinking, how can I fix this? How can I make it better? And the funny thing is that, you know, I was, I was a born leader. And when I was in these positions, I remember I would dress up with suits. I would have a briefcase, even though I was just an admin. And I was looking the part. I was acting as if. However, I had never heard of the term act as if. I had never heard of the term law of attraction. I had no idea that anybody was ever even talking about something like that. I just knew that in my mind, I needed to be leading. I needed to be doing more than just coming in and following somebody else's rules. So the truth is that I actually grew in my position. I actually, year by year, I continued to excel. And I did so because of my determination. If there was something to be learned, I would learn it. If there was some an opportunity to volunteer, I would volunteer. If there was overtime, I would take it. If um, something had to be done, even if I was on vacation, I would do it. Why? Because I was hungry for to excel, hungry to grow in the company. And that worked out fine. Now, at the same time, I was struggling at home. I was having problems with my relationship. Um, kids were out of sorts. You know, there was a lot of things going on in my house. I had financial issues. And I found that I was getting more satisfaction at work than at home. Therefore, work became my haven, my safe haven. Even though I was being worked hard, even though there were times that I was exhausted, I felt that it was a lot easier to go to work than to come home and deal with all the issues. And that's sad in a, sen a certain sense because you're really neglecting your family, but that's how bad things were at home. Um, as the years continue to progress, then I started to realize, look, I'm I'm giving this company a lot more than I'm what I'm getting compensated for. And not only compensated, recognized. And you start it starts taking a toll on you. But because I was so much time at work and not socializing, not connecting with people outside, I started to realize that I was simply existing. I mean, I thought I even had the thought what if I died? How many people would come to my wake? What would they say about me? Because the truth is there was nothing to say. I didn't, I didn't socialize. I didn't go out. You never saw me playing around. You never saw me having fun. All I did and all I spoke about was work. So what kind of a life was I living? Now let me ask you a question before I even continue. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you feel like your life has become work? Like you have stopped socializing, like you have stopped sharing of your of yourself just because you have given yourself all into your job or your career? Are you neglecting your family? Well, I was. And I was starting to feel like it was taking a toll on me. And when I, um, as I continued, I remember I was not happy. I was already starting to feel the toll. And I remember I would, every morning I would make my rounds to say hello to my team members. And I remember walking to my friend and all of a sudden I see that she's got this vision board. And you know, this vision board, even though it wasn't direct pictures of her, it was of things that she either wanted to do or things that she had already accomplished. And I had never heard of a vision board before. Just like I never heard of Act As If, I never heard of the Law of Attraction, I had never heard of a vision board. And here she is showing me her vision board and telling me how she was doing, what her progress was against the vision board. 
there were a lot of things that she had accomplished, including she had already lost over 100 pounds. She had begun exercising, uh, participating in marathons, all because she had envisioned and she was staying focused on what she wanted. She was traveling, went to Italy, went to Europe. She did a lot of things because it was part of what she desired in life. Now to me, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh my God, this girl's living. Here I am, a manager. Here she is, an admin. She's doing something great. I'm doing nothing. And here I am, struggling with my husband. She's living the life. What is she doing so great that I'm not? What is it that I don't know? And she basically says, look, I read The, the Secret. I have the movie. And um, it's changed my, my life. So let me tell you something. I am not somebody who, uh, back then I was not somebody who was looking to read things or believed anything. I was not somebody who looked into self-help at all. However, I was very curious to see what I could learn, what I could pick up. How could it help me? So I purchased the book, The Secret. The first time I read the book, The Secret, the only thing that changed for me was that, and that's not completely true, but I'll continue speaking about this. The first thing that I caught on to was accountability. At that moment, I knew that, look, my life was far from perfect, but I needed to stop complaining and I needed to stop being a the poor me. And I needed to become accountable and see what role I had played throughout my entire life. See, I had a lot of problems, but I wasn't an innocent bystander. I played a role. So the first time I read it, that was what I, what I learned and that is what I began doing. I changed the way I saw things and now I was accountable. If it went wrong, I participated. If I made a bad, if, if a bad choice was made, I played a role. There was no blaming, there was no pointing fingers. I was to be responsible. And it was something that started working really well. And even back then, my husband, you know, he actually saw the change and I can tell you that he enjoyed it. The problem was that he enjoyed it because he wasn't going to be accountable. He was simply thanking me for being accountable because it took the burden off of him. Now, I didn't realize that. I actually thought that now that he enjoyed that I was being accountable, he would start trying it himself and we would start working together. That's, you know, that'll go further in the story. So the thing is that here I am, I'm working on accountability and things are not changing for me. I am hoping for things to happen. I am calling to the universe and saying, I am better, I am stronger, I am this and I am that. Nothing is changing. Or so I thought. Have you been in this journey for a long time? And have you been wondering, am I in the right path? Why isn't things changing? Why are people saying they're seeing success, but I'm not? Stick to it. So I was on this journey for three and a half years. And that's when I hit rock bottom. October 2011, every single mistake that I've ever made in my life, it came crashing in. I mean, telling you, I was devastated. Not only was I financially devastated, I was emotionally devastated. I was here with my husband who never wanted to know about any problems, never wanted to hear about it. He was in his own little world. Here I am with all the problems in here, and I don't know what to do. I was ashamed of all those issues. I didn't, I didn't believe to speak to my parents. I didn't speak to my sister. I didn't speak to anybody. I just, I just shut down. And that's when I started having thoughts of death. I, I really contemplated the exit. I, I, I couldn't imagine being in this situation any longer. I mean, I had done nothing good for my family. I had done nothing good in this world. I had nothing to show for my existence. So remember that I said I had nothing, I had not seen any changes in me. Well, that's where I was wrong. You see, when I was in my darkest moment and I'm here praying for death, I'm hoping to get out of this world, I found that I had a little bit of hope and a little bit of faith, just enough. I mean, it wasn't 
sufficient to say, oh, God is going to come and rescue me. But it was enough for me to be able to hold on. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm so thankful for this journey because I know that this journey, even though I did not see the changes that I needed, they weren't, they weren't screaming out my name. They had happened within me. My situation was still the same. I was still not, I was still broke. Um, I still had a bad marriage, but within me, I had become stronger. I had become more assertive. I had begun believing that I deserved better in life, that there had to be something better out there for me, that I wasn't selected to be broke all the time and to be broken spiritually. I knew that there was something out there and that I had something that I needed to do. So while I was in my darkest moment, that's when I said, and I've said it many times, I found God. But it was because I found me. And I believed that if I could find myself, I knew that there was something within me that was bigger than what I could see, than my own shell. So I had my transformation moment. That is when I, and I've shared this again, where I imagined myself, I envisioned myself in a car. Now in this car, I'm at the driver's seat. Through my rear view mirror, I can see all my problems, but on my side and forward, there's nothing but the open road. That meant that I had nothing by, beside me holding me back, and I had recognized that the problems were in the past. With that kind of mentality, I knew that I could drive forward, and I envisioned every exit sign to be a milestone. And with each milestone attained, one of those problems would be removed or they would be reduced. That was so empowering. That was the moment where everything came together because I knew that I was in control. I was in charge. I was at the wheel. Do you understand how empowering that is? That you know that you're not just being taken in a direction that you are the one that can call the shots, that changed my life. And because of that, I actually began this page because I felt that I was rescued. I felt that even though I had not seen the things that I wanted in my life, I knew that I had grown and that I had found the faith, that I had found enough hope, that I had found that inner strength that I never knew I had. I knew that I was more capable of doing than I had ever thought possible. I needed to share that with you. I needed to, to reach out to people that were suffering just like I was. I needed to reach out and let you know that you too can move forward that it was that I understood that there was people suffering maybe you but I I wanted you to know that just like I had found my strength you could find it because it's here it's within you look life will get tough many many times but when we stand firm we can be tougher and we can overcome any challenge but we have to believe that we can and that is the biggest lesson that I learned at that time. So here I am starting this page, which was November 16, 2011. And when I started this page, I'm like, nobody's going to want to come on my page. Who's? I've never been a public speaker. I've never um, been somebody to just openly have a discussion. And here I am thinking I'm going to be able to open a page. So I did it anyway. And... I started begging people that I knew, can you please like my page, please, please, please. And from everybody that I knew, maybe 60 or 70 joined the page. Not even half of the people that knew me followed me. But let me tell you, the page took off and I was like in awe. I couldn't believe that people were actually connecting. That I was saying something and people were saying, okay, let's listen. And it was, it was amazing because all I wanted 
was to help somebody. Even if it was one person, I felt that if I can help somebody hold on a little longer, that I had done my job. And that's what I, still to today, till today, that's what I want. I want to give hope to those people that are finding it really hard to hold on to anything. Now, it's been a challenge, right? Because for, for a couple of years, I've been doing it, and I just did it as a volunteer kind of thing. But then, you know what? I realized, you know what? I'm working here in this corporate world. They really don't take you, they don't, they don't really compensate you the right way or treat you with the right dignity. And you're basically a number. And, and that's exactly my experience. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. Thankfully, I got laid off. However, let's back up a little. 2013 began. On December 31st, 2012, I hugged my husband. And I said, this is going to be our year. I can feel it. I know it's going to be our year. This is the year that we're going to get out of our mess. Two weeks into January, my marriage was done. And I'm like, how did that happen? I mean, I mean, I knew we had trouble, but I have committed to this relationship. I am going to work on this, and we're going to become all together. My marriage was done. I mean, it was absolutely done. There was no way that I would want to continue in this marriage. And I couldn't fathom this. This is supposed to be my year, right? How is it possible that now I'm looking at divorce? Well, my, my job continues to go downhill. I am miserable, miserable at my job. And I'm to the point that I'm like, God, <laughs> you know that I hate this. I can't do this anymore. I can't even pretend. I can't even act as if. That's how miserable I was. I can't afford to quit. And I can't afford to be fired. So being that they're doing layoffs, please pick me. So... I got picked and I did this happy dance walking out. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I hugged the HR rep. I hugged my, my boss. I mean, I wanted out of there. And the funny thing is that I, you know, I had a lot of issues. I had the divorce. I had issues with, will I be able to save my home? And now I'm unemployed. And you know what? It still wasn't breaking me. Something was, was wrong here, right? Something has to be disconnected. Well, I realize I'm not disconnected. It's just that this was my year. In fact, everything that was happening had to happen in order for me to reach the next phase of my life. The divorce, look, we spent 22 years of a miserable marriage and there was nothing left. There was nothing left, but here I was lying to myself that we can hold on a little bit longer. The kids are going to be out soon. This is it. We're going to get better. I was lying to myself. The job, the job was demoralizing me. I was no longer giving 100%. I wasn't even giving 50%. I got to the point that I was sitting in my car waiting till the last minute before I went in. I had never done that before. I was the kind of person that walked in early, left late, worked on over, worked overtime, even for free, and I worked when I was on vacation. Now I don't even want to go in. So I was completely demoralized at work. So my marriage came down, my job came down, and here I am, still to the, till today, figuring out the house. But here I am moving forward. Here I am doing something that I love. And what is it that I love? I love working with you. I actually enjoy working with you. I get, I go to bed thinking about the messages that I get, the private messages, when people ask me for things, people, people that are hurting. And sometimes at night, I'm still brainstorming on what I heard and how can I help you. I wake up out of bed and I'm looking at my phone to see who do I need to respond to. I love what I do. I love being online, doing these videos, talking to you. Now, I never thought I'd do this before because, again, I came from being shy. I came from, from thinking you would only see me for my weight. And here I am wanting to share my thoughts, opening myself up, sharing with you everything about me just so that you can hold on to your, to your little bit of faith. Why? Because if you see me for who I am, 
if you see me for the struggles that I have had, for the journey that I'm taking, you have the courage to do it as well. It's not about just looking at somebody who made it to the top. It's about you seeing somebody who's on their way. It's somebody who's doing it every single day, somebody who faces fears every single day but chooses to move forward. See, that's the life that I've chosen. And that's what I share with you. Now, I created an online course and I have it open just for you. And let me tell you, it's not about selling you something. It's about changing your life. You see, it took me three and a half years to understand what the journey was about. And for me to be able to start opening up, to be, for me to be able to connect with me. My goal is to get you started so that 2014 is your year. But what is, what is your year going to be like? Look, remember, my year, I thought my year was all the way up. My year became my transition year. Sometimes you have to be shaken up so that all the things that don't belong fall off. So that you become free or released from everything that's holding you back. But the only way that you can be ready for that moment is by you being open, by you reconnecting with self, by you accepting that there's something better out there for you. That's what my course is about. It takes you back to your past. It allows you to, to make peace with it. It allows you to recognize your residual effects where you are today. And it allows you to start defining where it is that you want so that you can create a solid foundation so that you can move forward. You see, the way I see it, if you have a solid foundation, storms will come your way because I can promise you, it doesn't matter if you are on your journey, storms will come your way. But when you have a solid foundation, that storm is going to hit. It'll shake you a little, you'll feel a little disoriented, but you're going to be standing. And even if it knocks you down, you're going to stand up even stronger than before. You're going to rise higher. Why? Because of the foundation. And how does it start? It start, starts by you reconnecting with self. It starts with you becoming clear on where you are and what it is you want in life and for you to believe that you can accomplish so much more. If you want to take 2014 by storm, I'm here to help you. Let's work together. Register today for that course and let's get started. When you register for this course, I'm putting you into a private group. Why? Because sometimes we take these online courses and we feel like, I don't understand it, I'm alone. You're not alone. With this private group, you have full access to me at any time. I will walk you step by step through that journey. I will be there to answer your questions. I will be there to hold your hand. Why? Because there's no reason for you to do this by yourself. You deserve better. And I'm here to help you find that. So if you want to work with me, if you want to work with somebody who's been a rock bottom who's been struggling, who has seen her life upside down and who's ready to fight, then I'm your person. I'm your girl. So let's work together and let's take 2014 by storm. Let's make it happen because you deserve better. So do I. Let's do it. Take care.